Yet a shik a dosh at ne, could I need a snash at a cheap prefer your father does a gene my dish gizin in slot to the chin in passage chain. Tapa a dash at che, adult a che dash in a little to the other is in a sha. A he had could you hana that's your gizzy did the model taki chuckle net. Ado could all a hand net and linny nich in dale in do, zail in dan linny, arj zail egin dal nishi do, it's easier than he could on his ed had a adon he not ado. In that Anni Lenny Lock Codon Hitch Eha Arco, Be Arnil in he ate to the Zinni, Be Arnil in Do, a Benda sheet to the Hadezi, a stock door as art are any here or Tlatna Zako, the Binny Big Shane Codon to the Zendole, Shik Edo Shidne, Codaho John Dole, Shamana Hassan, Yadel Hill, the Lisan, Twist Son, Charles Hill, Hyot Cars no day two, Hatch Eft here, Hatch A one. Na dans gre na dans tu tradedin ani sa ana rebik a hojon ni yajen e wet ni dlon kodo di bini bi na di ne ha shine la go e kodo na hat an lenin ta kes in lenin kodo ba na huil ne do hon ni ki kein lini hon bet ne il jan i nilsen ya at e ko hon hil na hot at o ya at e ko hil na hast a do na sko ne ne je a at ko hon hon ben e lini Ado asa a sitzeno, asa a nitzeno, kodo, can let a nail in he gin he go on long or less, he didn't eat or less, the hunch or less. Ado kodo that is a ido yat eho, but rum besna has ango, benanish besna has ango yat eho. In not na de yst eto le con benanish and leaning, do not na de yosin, no be ultra and leaning, ho. Ado ultra, ado ho one has ango ho nanish that eho. Yat echo home, Bahol Yadole, Nahaban Chitole, the Indonet and Nosini dance are down at our econic is a don't eat ye hair. Ado con hid the neck con did the Nebuka hot of his uncle home. Yat echo on his nahot at the Hojunk El Hon his last adole. Ado con hid the neck as she nail lacon as the El Eid, but the Hanna Yat echo besn the hot at the Yat El Bits East Handahonic as on his edge at the husk head or let con. Aron has chinned than Lini or you count out of Trahon, those and that is Traed on Hobbes on Lord or Leishi, answered that case Ishi, you got chin not than Zeni Hobbe like in Lord or Lehon, Ado asked for Hon, Nikirana has Argo, he caught a little clean Hironesh Kishna's Trango, Niki Trotna's Cargo Hon, he says Kenna's Lago, Yat Echo Hon, he's now at Onikea, Niki Lin, he not closely than Lini Yat Ahon Nada Kedo Lehon. Aron he not an lini he not ani than lini yat echo lehl to hon yat el hon han nada ha aron juno al elson and hayan to nada keso el a larger con his nikil ishta anayo sendo lekon he not an lini it's a letter con lord ole aro con is the eight in it than lini is at nikha than lini aro con sala it's easy day jahi as for hon benashni ole Ado de conkin has alcohol, they nishi is the home, he said, Ket and he check it, then Lini is three sunny, then Lini asks for home. Yat Elhon Nada Kedole, Ado con hits a lot so than Lini home, Edo Benashni or Len, he must son in his chain, he no less three sunny than Lini asks for Adon Yachin and Yatuichi Yita. A yat Elhon, Ket Nada has Ado Lehon, Ado Hon to the Zen Lini when she hope be her nana seat or the the law is that over or is that when we are not needle, when so for eight hundred and twenty, when we are not needed, or let over any just needle, when at the end when he just was not asleep, was not asleep, was not asleep, was not asleep. Like to thank all of you for tuning in at this time. And again, my name is Patricia Fowler, the Division Director of Human Resources. At this time, we usually hand off the floor to our leadership. Ado, our leader, both of our leaders are attending to meetings right now, but we'll give them the floor once they're available. So at this time, we'll go ahead and hand it off to our uh, division uh, director with our health health department, uh, Dr. Jim. Uh, we'll go ahead and give you the floor, Dr. Jim. Thank you, Dr. Fowler, Shamal, for that prayer, and also for all those listening on the Town hall today. He had non um Shadaji say Dr. Jill Jimin Shiato um Donna and the Sine look at the short Tatini Bassus Shin the Ishin does a chay dot as a funny dosinella. What art sons went on this other Ayusina Shadow 
Every week, I guess, we have this town hall meeting. And so, some of the mask mandates for Yenigi, um, or Iso Behatest and Sendo, um, Fashi Ani, that is not engaging, that the guidelines are not from the Centers for Disease Prevention and Control, the AI, yes, the, um, under the US federal government, quite the art when, um, the NAIC, it is in across the United States, and they give recommendations that they would add the, um, what that thought, these are recommendations, not Nisa. Even that the Shin Kwaedi, um, there's different jurisdictions on KA, we're under the Navajo Nation, and we are a tribal nation, although on Kia Kwaedi, but as on in the in the Kwaed, not so as a Honda D in the what are the Nahas on all these states, like the state of Arizona, state of New Mexico, state of Utah, I thought they have their own jurisdictions and they listen to these recommendations. So, um, a cliche, um, Cliche did is link at um, the CDC with a um, Nihicho Hon that the um, mask had Geniki to the Nihichiton, his it because to get that the Nih had to Harshin's or a whole Zij, a sheep in Natcha or Adon, get the um, the header did the questions target, but the Neta. Um, so, um, our quality under the Health Command Operations Center, Gay, quite a cliche is it in the door, the Indian Health Service door. Um, hospitals, doors, like the D, quite a Dr. Hammett, or East, or any, quite a D, what that any, um, quite a D, um, is it in the Lenny, quite a D, but if he had a deal with safety, if the deep in the gay, what our health advisory in daily. So as of yesterday, a cry, we sent out a reminder to the public that on the Navajo Nation, because of our um, tribal laws and our ability to regulate um, within our own tribal lands. A, in that a, we are not in support of the CDC recommendation that either if you're fully vaccinated to no longer wear a mask or physically distance in any setting. Okay, at the, we still have a public health emergency order 2020-07. And you'll find this on the Department of Health webpage. It's 2027. Um, and it's mandating use of a uh, mask in the public due to COVID-19 is still in effect. So, um, um, you're still required to wear a mask around other individuals outside your household. Um, the CDC guidelines, um, it gets really, um, Transmit it through social media and to the news very quickly, but it is just a recommendation that CDC offers. But in here, quite the hit the net on the mason don hit she don henala don lenny. Those that the di in hit the net a quite the um the di an ishing the condon he didn't and do ishing that that energy and that puts us more at risk. Go a ban city care so she been not that di ne do um. Dohans at the Shin DC been no credit though. Um, yeah, got the Hondi that the um, did the cousin siding us eight other so. I see what our bunch of the case of credit. If yeah, that the credit the ones that listen to us, um, that you're able to listen not to us but also um, making that decision individually to protect yourself and your family. I see been not yet. Um, it's more of a protection to. Us and um, we have been in this pandemic for a very long time, and sometimes we're unsure. And and the only way we know is that we've known that masks have been very effective. So continue to wear your mask, and 
also wear it appropriately as well, making sure it's a well-fitted mask that covers your nose and your um, entire mouth completely and wearing a double mask um, if you need to. So following those guidelines and still safely physical distancing. And so that's just um, a reminder that we wanted to just give to the public. Um, and also the, a reminder that where other individuals in your household can also now be more vaccinated. So on the Department of Health webpage, you'll see um, the updated schedule um, to make an appointment at your local health facility. So all facilities on the Navajo Nation is focusing on encouraging the 12 to 15 year olds to get vaccinated. We also know that um, in, if you are on there with your um, your niece, your nephew, your, your child getting vaccinated, if you haven't been vaccinated or someone that hasn't been vaccinated, encourage them to go with you to get vaccinated. They're not gonna turn away individuals um, and they're also not gonna turn away individuals that aren't um, typically receiving IHS services too. So just a message that um, that we um, facilities are open and open to vaccinating other individuals that may not use IHS services all the time. So, and there are events across the Navajo Nation um, that people can go to. So if you just go to this webpage, you'll see um, the updated vaccine schedule. So we have over a thousand 100,000 and 101,000 individuals that are fully vaccinated, but we can do more and we can do more with the kids. So right here, you'll see the schedule like at Canyon Cito, they do appointments only. Chinle, they're Monday through Friday. Um, they are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Also at Wildcat Den on May 17th and 18th, which those are the last two days. Um, there's one at Mini Farms Public School drive through today, so 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you live in the Mini Farms area, uh, if you could go through the drive through at Mini Farms Public School today, as Conche, we have Pinyon Health Center and um, doing uh, 12 plus, so anybody, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then we have certain clinics across um, Chinle area that are doing specific vaccine efforts. There's drive-through vaccines at Saley Public School. As Con, I thought, so go ahead and make your way to those different areas. So Crown Point does vaccinations and some are doing it in chapter houses, hosting these events at chapter houses as well. Also um, in Gallup, they have different events. They started all this past Saturday. So I hope we get a lot of um, individuals vaccinated. So just know there are different events. I did hear yesterday there was a vaccine event at Money Valley High School. So um, they're going out into the schools, the chapters, at the clinics. So you can look at this web page or call your um, your local health facility to get more information about vaccines. Um, tomorrow you'll see um, the Sheep Springs chapter will have a drive-through vaccine effort at, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Also at, um, to I don't know, with the Upper Fruitland chapter, certain dates through the next couple of weekends. So Hotel Medical Center has one at Oak Springs. They'll have a mobile clinic out there tomorrow. They'll be in Ganado today from 10 to 2. And then um, Sage Memorial, they have appointments every day, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So all of these are now open across to all the health facilities across the Navajo Nation to the city, has some events in Lichi in two days. So just look for, um, for that information and that's all on the webpage. And so I hope this kind of helps in raise regards to um, getting individuals vaccinated. And I think um, the 12 to 15, the FDA and CDC approved individuals to get vaccinated. And I think Dr. Hammett can speak to that, but we'll do some messaging out. And this is this one particular flyer that vaccines are effective and safe and it will save lives. And we are definitely seeing a reduction in numbers of cases for our older folks. But what we're starting to be concerned about is the younger folks. Another thing to consider is just the graduation limits as well. There's a lot of graduations that are still happening throughout the month. And so we still have recommendations on capacity limits. And so if your school is not in compliance with these, um, please let us know. Uh, we would like to just give them a friendly reminder that schools are all in compliance. So the only in-person outdoor gatherings allowed are seniors and college students. I did see pictures on social media of some school events 
please follow the um, recommendation. There's a reason why. And if we're seeing an uptick in younger individuals with more cases, and maybe um, maybe they might not be as vaccinated. So we just encourage everyone to follow the guidelines, not to exceed 100 guests of graduates for each particular um, graduation pod. Um, otherwise, the virtual live stream drive through gatherings are allowed um, with one vehicle. So I hope some schools are taking advantage of that. And then with the driving gathering, there's about up to 50 vehicles, but there's no in-person indoor that's allowed. And there are prepackaged food that are given to, event, um, to individuals after the event. And also there's a limit of two hours or less for these graduation events. So I just wanted to reiterate that. And then just another reminder is just to um, continue to make sure everyone follows all the recommendations. I can just quickly go through this again to kind of just let everyone know that um, to keep our mask on, physical distance, wash your hands, clean um, any highly touched surface areas. We are still in yellow, but we're expanding different services. So. Um, I know that President may speak to some of this earlier, but we are going to be initiating a new public health order that will um, be in effect possibly on Monday or sooner. Uh, basically, we're just expanding indoor um, dining, also um, looking at increasing the capacity for mar marina and parks and also on the museum and zoo and all the other businesses. Um, that have been in 25% in yellow will likely move to 50%. And then um, no other changes to daily curfews will take place as well. Um, there will still be a daily curfew. We are still seeing cases, so we're not technically out of the wood with a lot of this um, pandemic as well. And then, of course, the mask mandate is still going to be in effect as well. And so those are just some exceptions. And um, for the first time, we will be looking at um, opening roadside markets and flea markets as well. Um, so with the specific guidelines in place. Um, I know that the president might speak to this later when he joins us as well, but that's just kind of the general um, guidance or um, approvals that we're gonna be doing for the public and moving and expanding within the yellow phase. As I mentioned before, continue to double mask and using CDC guidelines on a well-fitted mask or double masking and then Gathering limits will be um, the same. There will be no changes to gathering, so please be um, cognizant of the gathering limits, especially during graduation. Um, right now, um, the graduations are occurring, so if you're doing any receptions or whatever with your family, please just be aware that take all the precautions that you need to do it safely. Allow people to pick up food if you want them to still celebrate um family members that have graduated but don't congregate across large gatherings of 50 25 or 100 people that's a little bit too much and we know there's still a small population of individuals that are not vaccinated that will actually contribute to a cluster so it's still happening we're not done with the pandemic so i know there's a sense of urgency um of thinking that we have a new normalcy just because restrictions are being lifted elsewhere doesn't mean that we do that here in the Navajo Nation because for us in K, um, we, we went through a lot and we all know that. I don't think I need to repeat myself, but it's kind of a respect to understand that um, to our elders and also our families that we owe them to protect them and ourselves to make sure that we um, keep this disease away from the Navajo Nation. So, And so when businesses are operating out there and expanding services, if there are customers or employees or anybody that has, is aware of a positive exposure, just know that they're required to report to the Navajo Department of Health. Um, under their webpage, there's a report exposure button so that we can properly do um, contact tracing. Our contact tracers all do a good job, so making sure that um, we all um, make sure we notify the command center or have the in individual get tested. It's still very important. Testing is still very important. So I think Dr. Hammett might speak to that as well, to making sure that um, just because we, va we have vaccines doesn't mean we should let down in other areas. So there's really some misunderstanding of vaccines and when to 
uh, maintain safety precautions. All safety precautions should continue. Also, just as a reminder, we're still in this pandemic, but uh, find ways to stay healthy and be healthy um, and ways that you can do every day might be taking a break, eating healthy, talking to somebody about this. So um, I know that there is still um, a lot to consider as we know that we're moving into the summer, finding ways to do something at home and um, to do things safely at home and um, prevent um, congregating in large settings. Those are still recommendations we want individuals to still consider. So I just wanted to thank everyone for being on the call this afternoon. So now I'm going to hand over time to um, President Nez. Um, so Dr. Fowler, I think if you want to talk a little bit until President Nez gets on the call, um, I will stop here. Thank you, Dr. Jim. I appreciate that. And uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, Shana, President, Honorable President Nez. Um, we'll go ahead and give you the floor, Mr. Nez. Honorable President Ness. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Fowler, and thank you, Dr. Jim, uh, for your uh, update. Good, uh, good morning uh, to all of you. And uh, we we kind of changed the lineup today. I'm on. I'm in Indian Wells, Arizona. We uh, uh, delivered their motor grader. Uh, to the community. So congratulations to the uh, Indian Wells chapter and their leadership. And uh, they will be um, having this uh, new equipment to uh, help out with their, their roads here um, on the Navajo Nation or in their chapter boundary. Um, and I'm also uh, currently on the call to with the White House talking about roads, really. And uh, the, oh, where am I got it? Uh, you know, we're, we're having a White House briefing um, on fe federal regulatory obstacles in Indian country and infrastructure. You know, talking about roads, you know, we, we need to change some regulations in, re in regards to uh, uh, making it easier uh, to maintain our roads. You all know that our roads are uh, pretty bad in, in, in some areas. And sometimes we have to jump through all these federal hoops just to get uh, improvements to happen. So we're, we're talking with the White House right now uh, to change and update some of these um, regulations and policies, you know, and, and infrastructure development as we uh, received our American Rescue Plan Act funding allocation, these laws uh, need to be streamlined so we can build, of course, roads, uh, get water lines uh, built, uh, electrical lines built, uh, broadband telecommunication, you know, uh, so that, you know, we don't run out of time like we did with the CARES Act. Um, so those are things that I just wanted to let you know, and that's the reason why there's a little change in the, uh, in the lineup today, but, uh, giving you a update on the vaccination, you know, I was out there, uh, over the weekend. So thir last Thursday and Friday, Saturday, uh, and this week, as you know, uh, Pfizer and CDC gave, an okay to Pfizer to uh, for the 12 to 15 year olds to get uh, vaccinated if they want. Uh, so there has been a big turnout uh, these past uh, few days 
in getting um, people, our young people vaccinated. Of course, it's just not focused on our our young people, 12 to 15. It's open for everyone, adults. So, you know, I was in uh, Sage Memorial Hospital. I was in Gallup, Indian Medical Center, where my my, my son, Christopher, uh, got his dose. He's 13 year old, years old. He got his dose. Uh, went out to Kianta, went, went out to Chinle as well for these vaccination events. And, you know, I get a chance to talk to some of the people who are um, getting getting their shots, these young people. And what I've heard is a lot of our young people are excited to get their shots. <laughs> uh, I, 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 w- I tease them. I say, I wish I was uh, happy like you all to get a shot uh, when I was your age. Uh, but, you know, I think the reason why they're, they're, they're wanting to get the shot is they want to go back to school. And they want to go hang out with their friends to get back to some normal uh, day-to-day um, work. And so they're, they're wanting it. And then you know what? They're bringing their family members too. So some of our family members that I talked to said, we weren't going to get our vaccine until our child gets a, vac- gets a shot. And so they made it a family event. So families are coming in. And, and the others I've heard is like, I, some were on the fence saying, I wasn't going to get a shot. But my, my son and my daughter wanted to get a shot. And so uh, I have to be here. I have to drive him over there to the vaccination site and say yes and get give um, the hospital approval for their minor child to get a shot. So he, they say, well, I'm already here. So I might as well get the shot too. So there has been some uh, interest once again to get into shots. And so one thing that, that I'm, I'm sure Dr. Janelle Jim mentioned and others are gonna mention today too, is there's a, 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 if you wanna call it a myth out there, that myth is, well, if I caught the, uh, the virus and over 30,000 of our Navajo people caught the virus, some are saying, well, I don't need the vaccine because I already caught it. The myth is, you know, yes, you might have the, the immunity to push back because you caught the virus, but at some time, uh, some would say 90 days or more after you caught the virus, you can still catch it again. And so let's tell our Navajo citizens out there that, you, you know, we encourage them to get uh, the shot, the vaccine. So and then the, the healthcare professionals will uh, give you an update on that today uh, and answer any of the questions. So Dr. Fowler, I'm sure there's gonna be some questions today. If we can jot those down for the healthcare professionals to answer. So if you have a question, put it in the comment. And you know, the other thing I wanna mention is, you know, everybody, off the nation, throughout the country are chucking their masks, right? Because CDC said you don't need it if you're fully vaccinated. Here on the Navajo Nation, you still need to wear your mask in public. Why? Because it's gonna be hard to find out who is fully vaccinated. Do you want the Navajo Nation to check your cards? I think it's easier just to keep the mask mandate on there. And you can see throughout the country now, uh, that that's how uh, there's a lot of confusion now because people don't know are you vaccinated or not and so I think a lot of people are still continuing to wear a mask in this country but here on the Navajo Nation we put the mask mandate April of 2020 and it's still going to continue until there's another uh, public health emergency order that says you can not wear a mask so some of you are is, is there a memo coming out or is there something official the official it started April of 2020 to require masks to be worn. That stays in effect. So I know we've gotten really good comments from our neighbors too, and thanking the Navajo people for keeping the mask mandate. And uh, you know, we, we just want to be safe. Uh, that's all we want. We want our Navajo people to not catch the virus and get sick. So uh, I mean, we'll eventually uh, get back to normal. I'm sure. And um, let's stay the course. Let's stay the course, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and the uh, um, updates for the nation, we've seen some 
uh, very low numbers lately in uh, COVID daily cases and uh, also uh, deaths and our, our thoughts and prayers go out to those uh, families who've lost loved ones. Let's continue to hold them up in prayer. Kodoshi uh, the update we received as of uh, 515 in terms of vaccination summaries uh, we received 247,165 doses. We did ask uh, the federal government for more doses of uh, Pfizer because that's being given to our, our 12 to 15 year olds now. Uh, so there'll be some deliveries. I think there might be some deliveries this already that happened this week. But this was this uh, summary I'm giving you is as of 5 15, 2021, May 15th. So of the 247,000 plus that have been, uh, that we received, 218,605 have been given. And that's 88.4%. Uh, so because we're getting shipments coming in, uh, Moderna and J&J, &J, you know, that, that uh, percentage does fluctuate. I know last, last time we uh, did a town hall, it was at 90%, got a delivery, got some numbers. Uh, re reevaluated. Uh, now we're at 88.4, and so we gotta continue to uh, vaccinate many more of our Nav Navajo citizens. So overall, 102,372 people are fully vaccinated. Two shots of Pfizer, two shots of Moderna, and one shot of Johnson and Johnson. Okay. Now last week. Uh, we started the 12 to 15 year olds on Thursday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, and throughout this week, uh, uh, young people are getting shots. So I got a update for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday numbers. Um, 12 to 15 year olds that got their shot, their first shot, there was 2,165 uh, people who, 12 to 15 year olds that got their shot those uh, three days. And that's not counting uh, SAGE, but I was at SAGE, there was a lot of people. I think at one point it was 70 people by the time we got there, which was like at nine or 10 o'clock. So there's more there too. It's not counting U United, Utah Navajo Health Systems or the three satellite clinics too as well. And these are Navajo Nation uh, residents. Uh, they're classified as living on the Navajo Nation land, uh, these numbers. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely give you a breakdown of that uh, more in depth because we're going to have to start including the adolescents with, remember, the May 15th vaccination summary report. So there's a lot of data and information that needs to be put together so that it's one. Uh, summary rather than a breakdown of two. Um, but the, the good news here too is that uh, 16 year olds, 7,726 uh, got their vaccines since uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So overall, 9,891 people got shots these past uh, three days. And still verifying that will get you some uh, numbers overall, including Utah Navajo Health System, Sage Memorial, and others. So appreciate the Epi team, appreciate Dr. Jim's uh, uh, teams, and IHS and the 638s for giving us information. 
uh, to make these informed decisions. So we're going to, I think Dr. Jim was talking about the public health emergency order, the new one that's coming out, uh, less restrictions again um, because of these low numbers. It seems like we're, uh, I don't have the chart here, Dave, because I'm, I'm out here in Indian Wells. But uh, if you look at the chart, you know, from red to orange to yellow and then green, the yellow and green line mm -hmm. Uh, shows that, and you have to have seven days straight of going, staying in green to go to the next uh, stage, you know. But it's it's fluctuates. We're right on the border of the yellow and green. So it's sometimes we'll have four days of yellow and then dips down to three days in green, and then the case goes back up and we go back into yellow. So there's not really this seven day straight but we've been right around that uh, yellow green transition area. So that's why we're not going into green just yet. We're staying with the yellow uh, protocols right now, but we are lessening some restrictions. And uh, Dr. Jim may have presented that, but we will uh, send out the public health emergency orders uh, soon. And so uh, I know that we didn't uh, have a, um, a uh, meeting on Tuesday, yesterday, usually Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? But uh, we'll have a a Friday um, uh, town hall and just listen out for that because um, we'll be getting some updated numbers that you all, uh, I'm sure, would like to hear about in terms of vaccination. So continue to wear your mask, social distance, and uh, um, wash your hands with soap and water, use hand sanitizers, and stay home as much as possible. Uh, the businesses uh, will be reopening uh, for longer hours. Um, and some of those stores that were 24 hours, I think they're going to be reopening pretty soon. Those stores that were 24 hours or that go up to 10, 11 o'clock, uh, those are going to be reevaluated, Dr. Jim in this new public health emergency order. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, uh, Aninda Kregi Koni Bada as Sigi, here Nakodo, Mado Jeche, Masan, another North Lenigin Ralchen, Bada Hoshianigi, here Nakode, a Zeb, which a Kodalia do Bada as Sigi, a Jaeb Nachi Eko, the Nashnegi, a Yego Yades Kido get at Elkon, the Nebuki of a car. So in this, he had a North Nido, Do Kondo, and he in Ralchen, the Istra. President, Vice President. Ado here, uh, Nikido, a mother of Je, a Che and Nala, a Mayajan of Lenny, a Dan of Lenny, Codona Ralchin became so zondo, these all yagido, uh, Nahado, Tabado Nenigi, here, a andi, if chin a yabigado, do, do, Nikina Hansala, mother, Je, Kain of Lenny. So it is a here and he didn't need a lesson. Just congratulating to. Uh, the graduates for class of 2021, once again, will be out at some graduations. 
Uh, I want to commend those schools that are following the, the Navajo Nation guidelines. And into you and, and the Net College uh, did just that. Thank you. Uh, and other schools and some other schools need, need to be reminded. Um, you know, uh, I, I just don't understand some schools not following through, especially if they know how hard hit we were here on the Navajo Nation. And I, I just challenge those uh, school uh, parents, contact their school board because you have control over those school boards and let them be reminded that we are a sovereign nation and they should abide by that and they shouldn't have to be taken to court. Uh, they should just listen and follow the protocols. And we're just wanting to keep everybody safe, especially our young children. And now that they get a vaccine, you know, it's open to them. And we see, yeah, we'll get back to school. But we're being very conservative here on the Navajo Nation. So thank you so much to everyone. And I will turn the time over to the Indian Health Services, uh, Captain um, Brian Johnson. And IHS has done a great job uh, helping with the uh, Navajo Department of Health as well. So God bless each and every one of you. And we'll, we'll see you soon. Captain Johnson. Hey, thank you, uh, President Nez. I appreciate the uh, comments here on today's uh, town hall uh, live session and as well as uh, the comments by uh, Dr. Jim. So uh, it's uh, good to be on again, everyone. This is Captain Brian Johnson, serve as the Acting Deputy Area Director for the Navajo Area Indian Health Service in St. Michael's, Arizona. I uh, work beside Ms. Rosalind So as the Area Director and also, uh, many of you are familiar with Dr. Loretta Christensen as the Chief Medical Officer as well, um, and, uh, and recognize her name. So, uh, again, it's great to be here just to share a little bit more information. And, of course, as we uh, continue um, to uh, work towards uh, the pandemic that uh, continues, but, of course, our numbers are much better than previously. But um, we, of course, at this point, uh, need to continue um, moving forward in a very uh, smart way, uh, really thinking through the uh, processes to make sure we're doing what we can to uh, protect our public, to protect the Navajo people, and uh, just making sure that we're working together across the Navajo Nation. And um, I just want to point out, as I always like to mention that uh, here on the Navajo Nation, that we do have a healthcare system. Uh, it's comprised of many components, but um, nonetheless, we, we work together in a fashion that is supportive of uh, protecting the public, the Navajo people. Um, if we work in isolation from one another as healthcare organizations, then that's not a good thing. So we, we make sure that we're communicating uh, and it, the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has been in, in my opinion, a, a very good demonstration of how we need to be working together to make sure that uh, we're providing the best service possible to our Navajo Nation customers and patients. And, and you know, it's uh, been very valuable to uh, work with the Navajo Department of Health and the leadership of the Navajo Nation. Uh, you know, on any given day, uh, we work with President Nez, Vice President Lizer, we also uh, work with various delegates on the uh, Navajo Nation Council, and um, as well as uh, some of the committees, the standing committees for the Navajo Nation. And, and those are all critical components to make sure, again, that communications are um, you know, happening and that we're really watching the uh, things that we need to be monitoring and uh, making sure that we're following through. I just also want to want to say thank you again to um, not only the, the federal uh, healthcare facilities uh, across Navajo Nation, but also to our tribal partners. Um, I know that uh, we work along the way. On, again, on any, any given day, we're on the phone with Winslow Indian Healthcare uh, Center Incorporated or uh, Fort Defiance uh, Indian Health Board and um, others across the Navajo Nation. And it's good to know that we maintain those working relationships. It's, um, it's uh, important also to note that we all continue to 
monitor together as a group uh, through the Navajo Nation Health Command Operations Center. Uh, I just want to make sure the public is aware of that, that throughout this pandemic, of course, we've learned a, a, a whole lot along the way. But and, and as we've done that learning, we've also uh, learned how to work better together. And um, we, we continue uh, working with, for example, the Navajo Nation um, EPI program and uh, Navajo Area Indian Health Service also uh, does some epidemiological work. And it's really good to have those, um, that sharing of information and uh, making sure that we're uh, following up on our, our cases, making sure that we're using the same definitions. And uh, again, it's, it's been very good. But we continue to work together to really monitor those case numbers across Navajo Nation. And I realize, as has been indicated on this call, that um, a lot of folks are getting, you know, in some cases, a lot more feel, feel a lot more comfortable with the case numbers that are that have uh, are, have reduced significantly in number. But I want to just point out that um, we do continue to have cases and see cases across Navajo Nation, although our cases are uh, much more reduced than than they were previously. And so um, it's it's just important that people realize that uh, although we're in a much better place, that uh, this is the time when we need to be uh, careful and we need to, uh, any, any, any uh, new changes that we make, we need to make those uh, based on um, data and, and based on um, leadership and uh, uh, decisions and uh, difficult decisions that need to be made. Um, also, we continue in, in terms of, you know, with the case numbers, we also continue to look at our uh, situation with our testing. So whenever, whenever we have um, patients come in for testing, it's important that we continue to look at that across the nation, the Navajo Nation, and understand what our positivity rates are for those that are being tested. And um, that information is used, again, to, to continue with our decision-making. And then we also continue to look at and, and monitor our hospital capacities. Um, we continue to support contact tracers. So um, you may still be contacted if, uh, by chance, you are exposed to a, a COVID-19 positive individual, perhaps in your community or in your own household. Uh, contact tracers are still working um, around the clock and uh, doing the activities that they need to do to make sure that any time that we have a positive case show up, that we're able to uh, really get to that quickly and make sure that we notify anyone who has been in contact with that individual. And, uh, you know, that I, I, I've emphasized that on several occasions before, just how important uh, that role is, the contact tracing efforts. But if we're going to con continue to control the disease spread, uh, their role cannot be overemphasized. So thank you to all those contact tracers out there. If you're uh, listening to Facebook Live today, thank you for the work you're doing because um, it, it is critical uh, to the process of stopping the disease spread. Again, i like to uh, also point out that, um, again, while our numbers are greatly reduced, we're also what I refer to as at a critical point in the pandemic uh, in that um, right now we still have things that are in our control that we can do, whether we're talking about leaders, whether we're talking about the general public. There's things that we can do and can control, um, and there's other things that's outside of our control. But um, I think uh, some of the points that have been raised on today's uh, Facebook session uh, continue to be relevant. Uh, meaning when we when we talk about continuing uh, mask wearing, uh, we've again we've heard uh, nationally there has been some reduction in uh, the use of, of face masks. However, uh, we are uh, respecting the uh, Navajo Nation leadership decision on continuing continuing with face mask wearing, and in fact um, at all Indian Health Service healthcare facilities here on the Navajo Nation you will note that all of our staff uh, continue to be required to uh, wear face masks, wh whether um, uh, they're working at a hospital or health, health center or maybe at area office, we're all required to continue wearing 
our face masks and uh, still feel that that is an important element in uh, at this phase, particularly as uh, we continue in, in the yellow phase. Uh, President Nez did a nice job of talking and speaking to the uh, yellow and green phases and kind of where we've come from. I mean, the started out with the, with the purple phase, which was when we had very, very high numbers of COVID-19 cases. We dropped down to the uh, red phase uh, when those numbers started coming down and to the orange phase. And ultimately, we've, we've, uh, uh, we've been at the yellow phase for the last four weeks. And um, there's only one phase left, which is the green phase, but we're right at that line of, of yellow and green. And again, this is uh, based on, uh, mostly based on our current case numbers that we're, we continue to see across Navajo Nation. And hopefully we'll be able to um, continue to reduce those daily case counts to where we can fully transition over to the green phase. But again, that's up to us and the decisions that we make uh, as a general public. Uh, when we talk about the prevention efforts that we can continue doing, that's uh, including uh, hand washing, uh, wearing our face masks, continuing to watch our uh, distance to the extent we can. I, I realize things are, there are, are some areas now, in, such as the grocery stores, where people are getting more and more uh, congregated. Uh, but um, we still need to watch our distance to the extent that we can uh, during this time. Again, if we if we do these things that we're talking about, including uh, vaccinations, we continue to increase those, then, then we should be able to move to that green phase in the not-too-distant future, which would be uh, really nice as it would uh, reduce some of the additional restrictions. So... Um, if we can just all continue to, to work together, to look out for one another, take care of one another, uh, we're at a good point, you know, we're, in a, we're in a good position. Um, we just need a little more time and let these cases continue to drop and we need to be respectful of the disease and, and not let it sneak back up on us. Um, I also want to uh, talk just a little bit about uh, COVID-19 testing and uh, it continues to be important that we continue to test across the uh, healthcare system here on the Navajo Nation. Um, in order for the health experts, the providers, uh, such as Dr. Hammett on this call, to, to understand exactly where we're at in terms of the numbers of individuals tested and the numbers of those who come back positive and negative, and, and if we have positives, what part of the Navajo Nation uh, did, did they come from? And do we have a small outbreak going on? Because it's important that we get those contact tracers involved and, and that we make notification and that we move quickly to not let something like that get uh, uh, start allowing our numbers to go back up. So um, I can tell you that all of the healthcare facilities around the Navajo Nation continue to be very diligent in monitoring. And I know in our own personal daily lives, it's uh, sometimes easy to get a little complacent or um, just, just not as concerned uh, because we're moving on. We all have a lot of things going on in our lives. But at the same time, we have to continue to monitor these things because we are indeed at a, at a critical point of um, will we be able to continue to drop down into the phase green or the green phase and further reduce restrictions? Um, or if our numbers continue to maintain, we'll continue to maintain at that yellow phase or uh, in, the, in the worst case scenario, if those case numbers started going back up again and we had to go back up uh, to the orange phase. So right now we're at a critical point and I just want folks to understand that and because, uh, again, there are things we can do now to help us in the future. And um, if we ignore that or if we do not respect that, then uh, certainly um, we could see case numbers go back up. So uh, definitely uh, continue to wear your mask and do those things, those prevention efforts that uh, we've uh, continued to advocate for over the last several months. Now, again, um, I know that uh, people may uh, be tired of hearing about COVID-19 vaccine, and um, hopefully you've heard a little bit here today, and I know Dr. Hammett will also uh, share some information on that as well. 
But um, we, we do continue to have the three different types of uh, vaccine that have been approved for emergency use, uh, the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the Johnson & Johnson. And as uh, President Nez spoke to, and I believe uh, Dr. Jim did mention as well, the Pfizer uh, specifically has been, uh, the Pfizer vaccine was specifically approved for emergency use for 12 to 15 year olds. And so at this point, uh, those, Pfizer is the only vaccine that's approved for that. And uh, we'll see what happens with the other two. Um, if, if they get also a, an emergency use uh, authorization. But for now, uh, with the Indian Health Service, we are definitely moving ahead with those shots, uh, vaccines uh, through, uh, from, Pfizer, from Pfizer with um, the 12 to 15 year olds. And um, it's, um, we, we are working those in to various clinics and uh, there's a schedule that, that has been issued. We continue to update that schedule weekly. And, um, and also we continue to monitor our uh, uh, vaccine supplies whether we're talking about Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson, uh, all of the tribal and federal health facilities across the Navajo Nation continually monitor those vaccine supplies, and then we're able to order uh, on a weekly basis. So basically the way that works is by Wednesday, Thursday timeframe of any given week, if we feel like we need to order additional vaccine, then we do that, and by the following Monday, we will have those uh, vaccines in our uh, in our supplies uh, locally. Um, so um, there are processes and there is communication happening. There's specific phone calls that take place between the vaccine uh, coordinators from the various health care facilities, which, which is very helpful, uh, making sure that we're monitoring the overall supply of COVID vaccine around the Navajo uh, Nation and what we have available. Um, so we do highly recommend that uh, individuals who have not received a vaccine, uh, e any of these vaccines, to uh, we do highly recommend that you do uh, get one of these um, and make sure to get fully vaccinated. And um, that, that will certainly not only protect yourself, but will protect others around you. And, um, you know, we, we've continued to use the... Um, I guess the tagline of, you know, let's reach community immunity, uh, protect yourself, protect your family, and protect your elders. And uh, basically, at a population level, looking at the entire Navajo Nation, in order to continue down that road of going from yellow to green, we really need to continue increasing our vaccine numbers or vaccination numbers. And so um, the more people that are vaccinated, the uh, easier the decision will be for Navajo Nation leadership in terms of um, moving down to the green level. Um, but we really need uh, increased numbers of, uh, in order for that to happen. That's just one of the best ways that we can prevent this disease spread. So if you're still, um, if you're still considering and you, you've decided not at this point, but uh, maybe you're still on the fence in terms of a decision on that, uh, certainly reach out to your health care provider if you have any questions at your respective uh, health facility that you visit, and uh, hopefully they can uh, help you with that decision-making process. I'm just, I'm really ecstatic to, to, and happy to report, you know, and, and I've mentioned it before, that when we look at the National American Indian uh, Alaska Native population, we're well over a million doses and uh, Navajo Nation has uh, comprised, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10% of, of those uh, nationally, which is excellent in terms of fully vaccinated individuals. So we're happy to see that as well. Um, so the important uh, takeaway points that I would just like everyone to, to think about for today is that we are still seeing cases, although the number of cases are reduced, we're still seeing cases. Um, the uh, Navajo Nation, in coordination with the healthcare facilities around the Navajo Nation, continue to monitor the variant forms of COVID-19. So um, we've all talked about the variants, and uh, we continue to monitor those through testing, sampling, um, and uh, we do get reports back on that, and our health uh, experts evaluate those reports. 
um, continue wearing your masks on the Navajo Nation. This uh, can be a, a very excellent um, point. As we try to move from that yellow to green, we, we certainly want to, to do that, and wearing your mask is going to be very important in that uh, journey, as well as continuing to wash your hands, continue social distancing. We talked about group meeting limitations. It's an important time of the year. Dr. Jim emphasized this with graduations, but we all need to be responsible at this juncture and um, not overdo in terms of having large, large meeting uh, meetings or gatherings, as uh, that's how transmission and spread can uh, really quickly uh, happen. And then continue testing. If you feel like you have um, a possibility of being COVID positive, we urge you to continue to go get tested at any of the healthcare facilities. That, that service continues to be available. And then, of course, um, get your vaccinations, and uh, particularly with a 12 to 15-year-old recently approved, uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing high numbers of those individuals getting uh, vaccinated. But with that said, um, I think at this time I will uh, send the, uh, the, I guess, the mic over to Dr. Laura Hammett. And we'll also share um, some additional information and maybe touch on some of the same things I touched on. But Dr. Hammett, um, I'm turning it over to you. Thanks very much, Captain Johnson. Um, uh, Johns Hopkins Center for American Indian Health, Banash Nish. Uh, president uh, asked me to speak today about vaccine recommendations for youth 12 to 15 years of age um, and to cover a couple of other topics related to vaccine. Um, I'll try to share some slides um, here momentarily if I'm able to. And um, as I mentioned, we'll talk a little bit about vaccine recommendations for youth 12 to 15 years of age, uh, some questions that have come up about the duration of protection and the protection that vaccines are affording uh, against variants. I wanted to start today with providing a little bit of a national overview of what's happening with COVID-19 related to the recent um, recommendations for vaccines in 12 to 15 year olds. These are data from the US um, that were presented uh, at the CDC meeting last week. And what you can see in the dark blue line are the number, uh, or sorry, the uh, rate of disease in 16 to 17 year olds. Um, and then the lighter blue line, the rate of disease in 12 to 15 year olds. Um, and it's estimated that there have been over uh, one and a half million cases among adolescents 12 to 17 years of age in the US. And I know that most of the time we, you know, many of us know adolescents who have gotten COVID-19 and for most of them it, you know, is a mild illness. Um, but uh, people this age are, um, can be hospitalized with COVID-19. And this slide shows uh, hospitalizations among adolescents who are 12 to 17 years of age. And what you can see in the yellow line is the rate of COVID-19 hospitalization. All the other lines are uh, hospitalization in this age group with influenza. Um, even the blue line is pandemic flu, um, H1N1 pandemic influenza back in 2009 and 2010. And you can see that COVID hospitalizations in this age group are far higher um, than even pandemic influenza and are much higher than these other years here where we've just had normal influenza years. So this is definitely a disease that can make adolescents uh, sick. Um, and we want to protect uh, people from that. We also know that adolescents can be important sources of transmission in the community. There have been a number of different outbreak investigations among children and adolescents, um, and that they've demonstrated that adolescents can efficiently transmit the virus to older household members. Um, there was a, a publication that talked about a, a family that got together uh, 14 relatives um, gathered together in a shared house and a teenager that came to that vacation was uh, had been exposed to COVID-19 before the trip. Uh, nobody was symptomatic at the time, but all the relatives shared a house. They didn't stay six feet apart. They didn't wear masks. 
and 11 of those 14 relatives of that teenager developed COVID-19. Um, people also came to visit them, but didn't stay in that house. And the people who stayed six feet apart, visited outside, um, and they, they were actually able to um, remain infection free. So we know that adolescents um, can uh, be an important source of transmission in addition to potentially, you know, getting sick with the virus themselves. Uh, as, as everyone has heard, the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine has now been uh, recommended for adolescents. And this really came after an, a period of uh, clinical trials and studying uh, how well the vaccine worked and if the vaccine was safe for this age group. So back uh, in the summer, nearly a year ago, uh, the, the Pfizer uh, clinical trials began in adults. And following the success of those trials in adults, the trials uh, began to enroll youth ages 12 to 15 years of age back in October, 2020. And the study enrolled uh, over 2000 participants in that age group and found that they had a very strong immune response um, and that the side effects were similar uh, to what was observed in people who were 16 to 25 years of age. So they could have uh, temporary arm soreness, headache, um, muscle or joint pain, tiredness, vomiting, diarrhea, fever or chills. These are temporary side effects that um, last usually a couple of days at the most. And importantly, none of the youth who got the vaccine in the study, um, none of them got sick with COVID. So the vaccine uh, worked very well in this age group. The FDA reviewed all of the data um, and determined that the vaccine was safe and effective. And so they expanded the emergency use author authorization for the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for youth uh, 12 to 15 years of age. And CDC also removed, re reviewed all of the data, including the data that you know, looks at just how many cases of COVID-19 have occurred in this age group and recommended vaccination um, of youth. And now just to bring it a little bit more locally, um, what we know here on Navajo Nation is that last month um, in April of 2021, uh, youth in the 12 to 18 age group represented about 16% of the confirmed cases on Navajo Nation and its border town. So this is still, you know, uh, this age group is still accounting for a pretty considerable amount of, of disease that's being seen here. And throughout the duration of the pandemic uh, on the Navajo Nation, there have been uh, nearly 4,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in people aged 12 to 18 years. So this is definitely something that we um, want to focus our prevention efforts on. Um, there are a number of materials that are being developed, and Dr. Jim shared some of those earlier. Um, to help people, you know, recognize the importance of uh, COVID-19 vaccines, that they are safe and effective and now available for everyone 12 years and older, and that being fully vaccinated helps us get back to friends and to school and to sports. And as Dr. Jim highlighted earlier, as well as Captain Johnson, um, on the NDOH website, you can find information about all of the many, many vaccine clinics that are happening around Navajo Nation to offer um, vaccination, not only to those 12 uh, to 15 years of age, um, but sometimes we're seeing where those adolescents are actually the ones who are um, inspiring and motivating their uh, older family members who may not yet be vaccinated to come in and get the vaccine. So a couple of questions that have come up, um, separate from vaccinations in 12 to 15 year olds, uh, do I need the COVID-19 vaccine if I had the virus? Absolutely, yes. Uh, immunity from infection decreases over time and people can get reinfected. Uh, and we've seen um, from many studies now that the vaccine actually provides stronger protection than infection, and it can provide more broad protection um, against some of the other variants that may be circulating. So people who have had the virus should get the vaccine after they complete their isolation period. Um, it's not required to wait uh, for three months, although people may have some, uh, some protection that lasts for the first few months after their infection. It's not required to wait for that amount of time. They can get vaccinated as soon as they complete their isolation period. There's also questions about whether the vaccines will work against the variants. The Navajo Epidemiology Center is leading 
a strain uh, surveillance initiative for the Navajo Nation. And through that uh, program, there have been several variants detected here that I know that uh, President has spoken about previously on town halls. So we have uh, the UK variant, the California variant, and the Brazil variant have all been detected uh, on the Navajo Nation. So far, studies suggest that the current vaccines will work well against the variants. Um, this is something that's being closely monitored. Um, but one thing that we're absolutely confident of is that the current vaccines uh, will help prevent hospitalization and death. And so vaccination is, is really important to help prevent, um, protect against the variants and prevent the spread of the variants. In other communities, um, the arrival of variants has led to increases in disease because once these variants get a foothold, um, many of them tend to spread more efficiently and more rapidly. We haven't seen this on the Navajo Nation. And I think that's really a credit to uh, the Navajo people who have been um, really diligent uh, with precautions. So people are continuing to wear masks, uh, keep distance, um, do hand washing, and really importantly, to have gotten vaccinated. I think the combination of the high rates of vaccination um, that we're seeing, as well as continuing these other precautions, has really um, slowed the spread of the variants. Even though they've even though they've been detected here, um, they haven't really been able to get a foothold. So we need to keep up these measures that will um, protect the community and 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 prevent you know these increases in disease from happening here that that we've seen in other areas. A lot of questions have come up recently about whether booster doses will be needed. Um, and I, I'm happy to report that protection remains excellent for at least the first six months after vaccination. Uh, Pfizer recently reported um, in their six month follow up that there was 91% efficacy. Um, and I believe that data are coming out soon um, from Moderna on this as well. But so similar um, high efficacy for six months after vaccination. The full duration of protection is not known, and it's possible that booster doses may be needed in the future to provide more long-standing uh, protection. Uh, this is being looked at in clinical trials uh, now. And so just wrapping up with a reminder, I think what everyone is, is emphasizing is that vaccines are really critical um, for the protection of the community, um, but that we still need to do our part um, with wearing a mask, watching uh, our distance, and washing hands. Uh, frequently. We know that the vaccine, it, it, for people who are immunocompromised, um, they may meet, remain vulnerable to COVID even after vaccination. And of course, not everyone is eligible to get the vaccine. We don't have vaccines for children under the age of 12 at this point. And so we really want to try to protect um, our, our community until most of the community has been able to be vaccinated. Um, and so I'll uh, stop uh, sharing now and say uh, hey, hey, thank you for the opportunity to um, to present this morning. Thank you, Dr. Hammett, um, Captain Brian Johnson, Dr. Jim, and also uh, President Hehe. Kodoshe o chidas ano na ket na han nei deshli. Internet <laughs> A conde, she cater should never could open his nahasne. A cord D in his ninny a ya as a ink in the eighteen he cheat on his abadat de spal on dark. Aro D not there, um, yes, a zen and baby eat the dead CDC, the ninny a arj a yan he cheat on his bed, but that is balik at Nicho, not your what then his ninny. A she arch a hut at oak, don't he nudge or you go, neck what they la a condin he, the nanny, tlinny do, the never cut with her hot so ye ate or that set a bend dark he, hala, naha, needs the nibbin in a bit ni yego, not ye eat doty, not ni he, ado is zet, lenny dot naha, that old need is zet, bachas lead or bachon, argy, it's enough.
ชิงอัตอาเอยาเบคตอนนันดาสคาฮีเอนฮิสเนเอโจเอเปนิอาตเอนเดปาตาอัตเซอาโดเซเอลเอเบนฮาสอโนอาอาสอาอัตเอโต
Kokodo zel in the yada had ne ash pond in his chid on his zet at a day's ball on a cray. A jashin nikinago ain't a day land. Osh o yo a kick a hona had just eat on the head a honey zen. Ado dina kits at a door deck of bed a hay is that Bahas Lee o a con de codo a yan has na oj at a no doctor hermit. A in the chin no set. Ki jo e do sato pedos na o o wande yis na zago a de na na doi it e jo ko es la ya ho ne di a ni ni yajin ki e we di a ta pe na ke ko ha ko shin cha ta de ya a do na zago e ko ho wande na za a do ta o ta do a shin tlo de a tlo ha ho a ho wande ta o ta ko a de shin di a ta hil e o the Nen Lenny's three sunny hit that is not a cohort a eight on it. Then that Joe is a epa has in Cotty Pfizer will yenigi a a arjaco a definite china pahijon adopa or sepicado a ya a ship a candantal doctor besides in the nesker ada a han a chete ya the dole jot a side effects. They sne a conde. Din leda o halto yen da e trade de milliage don a te betino ashla atta. A kone la e dina kit atta to te beat atta nan se e. A kone la beta desna. A kone la nat la e benach yat e nta sli a kone de chat atta to yago beta rage aj e ze in lini ati banal kahane. Ot a e kordoni his china da ho seat ado legic edo shedin ne. A codipe has any public health order will yenik as a hanad netto, a bansi cast up in a wheat a codig at the sobi e kaisa hodas a anat at all ni. As a pes of belt, ha eight as a nakiago pick eho at that eh, de yard pick eho at all little to a banat or co a she dig at the more yard or the more she banate in on as a hanad netto. A codin da in Nishkun, Codon Hinat Ahne, Adishin Sahot Aben, his Nahot on the Edi, a Hanel Nato Ha il Kisi, Eshi Adeben, his Nahot on the Ado di the Kosnas eight at the Petit Nini Ati Nato Ado di variant is Nini is the Ati Sahon dal don de don hitos chatta that did not answer these then. A condition Edo should not only hit in it, are only hit in a half nasla. Hajo pahoni zago baby kit eat he do bet na a hini tino ado big in a nil neako. Jahot a is edo nil don juno nadika. Ah, a ni o you do da is ta da ka o you lay na ho chanta chanta al dente. Jo betta a was yado betta ha no sin. Jo hago da charge the raho da a twenty head a chief e. Hachin has said the other daughter days ball of dark and dark. Ajito hot ahead a warm mar ekoje, doche de yos in the shadow doches in the doors and no zin it eda. Quit Jahashin dots eat ego at a Hanazin lay zel ill at Yaha Yaha Jagado ado hot that eat donasi bends that zeta hot that eat ye ad a ye go ke ye shikado shed in there. A benina pahan. Ba eta ha no sin, eta ha a zi, ba ha no sin. Jo o yugo hat anna in tinchik edo shit na a kodi ihe had ni hidi ni dole. Koja hanata so giziki. We like to thank all of you for listening to our town hall today. We will have another town hall uh, by Friday to share more numbers with you. Uh, please look forward to a new public health order, and then we are working and monitoring that as our healthcare profession has stated. Again, please get your vaccine, get your vaccine. We have all hospitals that are available and are working on their schedules as well. Thank you and have a blessed day.